Today I'm going to be doing an acrylic painting demonstration of this swan. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today's video is sponsored by Graphic Stock. I got to take part of Graphic Stock's Creator to Creator initiative. To take part, I have painted this swan using one of the photos that I downloaded with my subscription to the Graphic Stock website. With a Graphic Stock subscription, you get unlimited access to over 350,000 graphics photos and vectors. You guys actually see me using them way more than you think you do. While I do use them for reference photos, like I did on these two portraits recently, and of course on this swan, I also use them a lot for downloading images that I can use on my blog posts. If you are writing blogs and you need a picture of a random birthday cake, you can probably find just about anything you need over at Graphic Stock. And of course, it is great for artists if you are looking for reference photos. And the great thing about using reference photos from Graphic Stock is that these are royalty free. Your, your subscription purchases the license to use any of these graphics. So you don't have to worry about a photographer coming back and saying, hey, you used my photo, I didn't give you permission. You have full rights to use those photos as reference for your own artwork. If this sounds interesting to you, click on the link in the description box below to get a free seven-day trial of Graphic Stock, which will give you unlimited downloads to 350,000 graphics, photos, vectors, and more. And if you do create something special with one of those images, share it with hashtag creator to creator. To start out with this one, I painted my background mostly solid blue. I ended up fading a bit of phthalo blue down to ultramarine blue mixed in with black, but I wasn't too worried about having everything perfectly smooth my main goal was just to get that canvas covered and for this one I am working on a Fredericks mixed media canvas board so it is very very smooth makes getting fine detail very easy so once I've got that blocked in there I'm going to use a mop brush and fan out my brush strokes or at least most of them it's okay if some of them are in there being that I'm going to throw in water anyway on top of that now I am using a mixture of phthalo blue I let that dry completely I'm now using phthalo blue with some white and a touch of black just to tone it down a little bit give it a grayish tone and I'm creating these watermarks in here side to side they are slightly curved none of these are perfectly straight I used a white charcoal pencil to loosely sketch in about where I wanted my water ripples to go. Now at this point, this looks really harsh. It's not going to stay this way because I'm going to glaze color over. You can see on the background or on my reference photo how muted that background really needs to be. But in order for me to get to that point, I've got to make sure that this has a lot of contrast because when I start glazing color over it so that everything's nice and smooth and toned down, it's going to darken this up a lot. So in knowing that, I'm going to go ahead and go lighter than what I want my end result to be. As I move down towards the bottom of the canvas, I'm starting to mix more ultramarine blue into my mix, which gives me a much cooler blue. I'm using a bit of water mixed in with my paint so that the paint flows smoothly. If you end up having little dots where the background color is showing through, the paint's not really flowing on smooth, that lets you know you need more paint and more water on your brush. Adding a bit more, and for these areas down here I am smudging that out with a smooth or a dry stiff brush and that gives me a nice soft transition from one brush stroke to the next even though I'm mixing wet paint onto dry. And all of that will be smoothed out quite a bit once I start glazing over it. And when I start glazing, I'm actually going to be using, instead of water, I will use my Liquitex glazing medium and that will make the paint a bit thicker, so it'll allow for more light to reflect, reflect through each layer. It just gives it a very nice, almost glow to the finished piece. Now, I don't like using glazing medium if I'm doing teeny tiny detail because it is very thick. For that, I just use water. But on something like this where I've got a larger area that I'm going to be glazing, then I like to use glazing medium. So I had my swan drawn out on a piece of tracing paper, and then I used transfer paper to transfer that image onto the canvas. This keeps my lines nice and clean. Once that was on there, now is when I'm using my mixture of ultramarine blue and my Liquitex glazing medium and glazing right over everything I did before, the dark and the light. Everything gets glazed over with this color. I'm going to cover everything up with this. I really don't have to worry about brush strokes showing too much. This is very translucent. Decided I wanted a few more ripples in there, so I painted those in. I've got to dry them all the way. 
And whenever you see me use the hair dryer, it looks like the dryer is very, very close to the canvas. That is just an illusion based on how the camera is set up. I actually have that hair dryer at a pretty good distance from the canvas, at least about a foot away. If you get too close, you can make the area too hot, and that can cause problems with your acrylic paint. So I'm going to go ahead and finish filling this in. And I can do this in a couple of layers if I want to darken it up even more. I just want to make sure that I let it dry all the way in between each layer. Once I get that background how I wanted it with the mean glaze, I'm coming back through with a little bit of ivory black mixed with some of my ultramarine blue and my glazing medium, and I'm darkening up some of the darker portions of these water ripples. This is a very translucent mixture, and so the way that this is being painted on and how it's overlapping just a bit over the lighter areas, I get this very, very soft transition from my light to dark, so it's not too choppy looking. Filling in some more with the dark areas. Once that is done, I am going to go over everything with another layer of ultramarine blue, but I didn't record that portion. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the swan. Now I've put the glazing medium away. This area is very, very tiny, so glazing medium is going to make my paint strokes too thick for what I want. Now I'm using water to thin my paint. And I'm starting with an unbleached titanium white. I'm using Liquitex Basics for this. I used the unbleached titanium white for the majority of this one. I'm going to come back through and use titanium white, the brightest white, only for my brightest highlights. But the majority of this one is painted in first with unbleached titanium white. Now his beak is going to need to be orange, but I can't just paint orange straight onto the blue or it won't show up. So what I've done here is painted my opaque unbleached titanium white, I will let that dry, and then later on I can come on with my orange and it will be nice and bright. Pulling some of my phalo blue mixed with white into the shadows of the swan. Now, for this guy, he is really small, so I'm focusing more on my lighting, not so much on tiny, tiny detail here. I want to make sure that my shadows are correct, that my highlights are correct. That's what is really going to matter. And I am watching that my brush strokes are moving in the direction of the feathers, but I'm not painting in each individual feather like you often see me do on larger pieces. So in order to make something like this work where you're not going to be putting in a ton of detail, you really want to make sure you've got great lighting on whatever your reference photo you choose. And here I've got really nice shadows, really nice highlights, and I want to make sure I play that up. That is really important in keeping this looking how I want that end result to be. Painted in the beak, just that solid orange. I'm going to let that dry. Going to come back through and keep working on some of the texture in the feathers here. You can see I'm giving that hint of where the feathers are, but I'm not painting them all in individually. I just want to make sure when I come through with that liner brush, or even when I'm using the larger brushes, I just need to make sure that those feathers are going in about the right direction. But I'm not sitting there counting on my reference photo going, okay, 15 feathers going across this way, 20 feathers going down this way. That is not so important when you're painting like this. Here, it's my lights and my darks and making sure that the brush strokes are going in the right direction for each feather. I'm basically creating the illusion of feathers without having to actually paint in each individual feather. When you use a liner brush, if you are not familiar with these, make sure that you use a little bit of water with it and just twist that paint into the brush. You don't want big globs of paint on the tip of that brush or it won't work. I do have a video showing you how to use a liner brush. I'll have a card pop up so you can check that out. Coming back through again with the unbleached titanium white. And this is a very opaque color, so it's going to cover that blue really well. But I'm going to let some of that dark blue from the background work for me. I'm going to leave it in there where I want some of the shadows in between the feathers. Because when you're working with colors with a lot of white, it is very reflective. It's going to reflect the colors that are around it. So I want to make sure that I pull those blues that were in the water into the bird as well. But here, the blue is already there, so why try to cover it all? Let's just let that work for me. So as you can see, as I build these feathers up, notice how much of that blue background I leave showing through. Again, just creating the hint of feathers. They're not all perfectly detailed. Watching that reference photo very, very closely to make sure they're all going in the right direction. Adding some of this blue. Now that blue is the phalo blue with white and a bit of black so that I get that grayish tone. 
painting that into some of these deeper shadows. The brush that I'm using here is a flat Taclon bristled brush. It is a pretty small brush. But it makes it pretty easy to create the look of feathers. Just each individual brush stroke, one brush stroke is one feather there. And you're going to go through many layers that are not so attractive. Just keep layering until it looks how you want it to. Now I'm coming on top with some of the titanium white. Look how much brighter this is now when you go up against the unbleached titanium white. I'm using this for the very brightest portions. Still want to make sure that I got the brush moving in the right direction for each of these feathers. Using the liner brush for a few more details in here. I've got a few dots on the beak to make it look shiny. Coming back through with the liner brush for some of the smaller feathers, but even as I do this, I'm still not painting in each individual feather. Kind of catching those clumps and clusters of some of the bigger feathers in there. I've got some straight lines for these longer feathers, but I need to make sure as I add these straight lines or as I add these smaller feathers that I'm not completely covering up that background color. I need those background colors to show through. That's how I'm creating the illusion of having a lot of detail where I really don't. But it's important to have those colors. You don't want to just come through here and glob white everywhere. Then you've just got a big white glob. Some of these smaller areas, again, and I know I've said this a lot already, but really watching the direction that those feathers move. That is so important. With a liner brush, the harder you push, and really with any brush, the harder you push, the thicker your lines are going to be. If you use a very light hand and just barely let that brush, the tip of the bristles touch your canvas, you're going to get much thinner lines. So with this liner brush, this one is either a number three or a number four. I'm able to get just as fine of lines as I would with a number one, just because of how much pressure I'm adding with that brush. Adding a little bit of glazing there with some phalo blue just to pull the colors from the water out. Now we are going to focus on the reflection. Now on the reflection, I did adjust this a bit from my reference photo. I made this more orangey or more brown, a lot of warmer tones here to really set it off from the actual bird. And that is just personal preference. This is one of the reasons that I think it is such a handy tool for artists to learn to use Photoshop or some kind of photo editing app or program because I was able to go into that and find out what it would look like if I made the, the reflection a little bit of a different color. I was able to make those alterations before I ever hit the canvas. That way I didn't find out after I had already painted it in that I didn't like how it looked. Here I was able to make those adjustments in Photoshop, decide that I liked it, and then I could apply that to my painting using a lot of burnt umber mixed with a bit of black and some white. So I'm getting this brown, this very warm gray color for a lot of it. There's a tiny, tiny bit of phalo blue into some of that gray. Not too much though. Now here I'm not going to add nearly as much detail as I did on my actual subject. When you're painting reflections, one of the big things to watch, well watch your reference photo or if you're painting from life, watch that subject because the reflection is not just a mirrored image. You can't just draw out the, the top swan and then flip it upside down and have the exact same on the bottom. That won't look right. The reflection is going to change depending on your perspective to the subject. So here, if we look at the tail, on the actual bird, you're seeing the upper feathers. You're looking at him from the top, but the reflection is showing the bottom of his tail. So it's a completely different perspective. It is not just a reversal of whatever the subject was. That's a big mistake that a lot of new artists make. They think they can just flip it over and make it exactly the same and that looks like a reflection. No, not really. That will throw off your perspective completely. So make sure that you are looking at your reference photo or if you're draw painting from life, really look at how those reflections compare to the actual subject. Don't just reverse them. Again, not going nearly as detailed as I did on the subject. And actually on my reference photo, was it was much more detailed than what I painted here. But because I'm painting so small, I'm really, I just want to catch the hint of the feathers. I want to focus more on my contrast and my values. Coming back through with some highlights here using some unbleached titanium white. 
adding a bit more of a shadow in between the bird and the water and the reflection. So I've gone along the edge there with a little bit of black mixed with my burnt umber, which gave me that very, very dark brown color. And I just wiped that along the line in between the bird and the reflection. Some more unbleached titanium white for the highlights here. I'm using the liner brush for some final details. And at this point, I really spend more time backing away from my painting and deciding what would make it look best. And especially on something like this, where I'm focused more on my contrast and my values, my lighting, that is such a big deal on something like this, that I'm spending even more time than usual backing away, looking at it from across the room, or even squinting from right in front of the easel, kind of squinting at it. Because when you're sitting this close to something where you don't have as much tiny detail as you might normally be used to painting, it'll start to look weird or wrong. You'll see a really sharp shadow and think, oh, I need to tone that down. That doesn't look quite right. Back away from it though and look at it and then decide if you really want to tone it down. More often than not, you don't. More often than not, once you back away from it, those strong lighting, the strong contrast, the strong shadows that might look weird when you're up close really look amazing. That's what will make the piece. So but spend a lot of time backing away or squinting at it or even taking photos with your cell phone so you look at it in a smaller scale. It makes it much easier to decide if you want to make any of those adjustments. But there is the final painting. Thanks for watching. Hey, have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going to it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. And don't forget to use hashtag creator to creator if you create a piece of art from one of your graphic stock downloads.